The app Notion is extremely popular among students, especially medical students these days. And two other things which are extremely popular are active recall and spaced repetition. Let's see how we can incorporate active recall and spaced repetition with Notion in order to get the best possible results. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Oslo in Norway. On this channel, I talk about life as a medical student in Norway, as well as sharing other valuable stuff such as effective studying based on evidence and science and also productivity. So if those topics sound interesting then make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Now the most common way of using the app Notion is by taking notes in medical school right and however since my workflow in medical school is completely independent of taking notes since I do not take any notes in medical school I am completely dependent upon active recall and spaced repetition and the way I combine these two techniques with the app Notion makes the app Notion really function like a flashcard app only much better much much better so i'll be breaking down this video into three major chunks firstly i'll talk about how i incorporate active recall in notion secondly i'll talk about how i incorporate space repetition in the app notion and thirdly i'll talk about this external brain system which i have in the app notion which helps me manage and structure the lectures in medical school and this external brain is what i call for missions so we'll talk about that more in a moment and since time is the most precious thing in the world you'll find the timestamps in the description box below so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. In order to really understand how I incorporate active recall into Notion, we need to first have a look at the structure or how I organize my system and everything, all my subjects and all that stuff in the app Notion. So I basically have one separate page for every single subject. So one page for neurology, one page for op op ophthalmology, one page for pharmacology, and one page for ENT. And then all these subject pages are further divided into the topics within that very subject. So for example, within neurology, we have um, tumors, we have cerebrovascular diseases, we have epilepsy, we have uh, multiple sclerosis, etc, ALS and all that stuff. So we have firstly pages for the different subjects and then secondly all these pages are then further divided, subdivided into the topics within a particular subject. And by the way in case you don't know it's extremely simple to create a page in Notion. You just simply right click and then choose create a page. That's it. Nothing complicated, quite simple stuff. Now in order to practice active recall I basically use this ultimate feature that Notion offers which is the toggle feature. So what I like to do is that I simply use the toggle feature to write down the question from a specific lecture and then I copy the answer or the screen shot the answer from the PDF or the PowerPoint to that particular lecture and then simply paste that under the toggle. And sometimes if the answer is pretty short or if the answer is something that the professor has said and something that is not included in the PowerPoint, then I simply write down the answer very, con very concisely instead of, you know, just not writing the answer because that's what I previously used to do. So if you have seen my previous videos, I would basically use Microsoft Word to write down my active recall questions and I would not write the answers to those active recall questions previously. And that was because I, I wanted to really actively search for the answer because this entire idea about effective studying is that the more effortful the learning process is, the more likely we are to retain that very information. Now, even though that worked out pretty well for me, I still believe that the price value proposition then again, which I was getting from this was not really up to the mark because I was actually using quite a lot of time finding the answers to those questions but at the same time I believe if I had simply the answers hidden somewhere then it would save me a lot of time without really compromising that much on my learning. So I think this way the system in Notion which we have uh, using the toggle feature and hiding the answer underneath those toggles is quite smart. So I basically use the toggle feature to write down the questions and then secondly I hide the answers underneath those toggles. So that's quite simple actually. And one more thing that I like to do while making these active recall questions using the toggle feature is that I like to organize my questions as systematically as possible. So I always start off with the basic definitions, right? What exactly is the disease or or the, like the basic stuff which I should know about that disease. And then I move on to the pathophysiology or how the disease develops before going to the symptoms and then the diagnosis and then in the end, the management for that disease. In this way, my active recall questions are structured as if I was writing notes. The only difference being that I'm not really writing notes, but I'm just writing questions for my active recall. 
Most of us are probably familiar with the term spaced repetition, which is basically the act of testing yourself or practicing active recall with increasing repetitions or with increasing intervals between repetitions in order to disturb Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, which will make sure that we um, consolidate the information in our long-term memory. Now, revision can be done in two ways, using the prospective revision timetable or B, using the retrospective revision timetable. And in case you don't know what that is, you can check out my video where I talk about or where I explain in detail about these two um, um, revision timetables. Now, even though you can use Notion for both the prospective and the retrospective revision timetable, I personally like to incorporate Notion with the retrospective revision timetable. And I have one re retrospective revision timetable for every single subject. So I have one timetable for neurology, one for ENT, one for ophthalmology, and one for pharmacology. So all you have to do in order to have a retrospective revision timetable in Notion is simply create a new page, and then secondly, choose a table template. Now in the first column, I write down all the topics within that subject. So for example, if you're talking about neurology, then I have all the topics listed on the left. And in the other columns, I write down the revision numbers where I write down the dates for the revi for revisions. So for example, if I revised, I don't know, um, brain tumors, then I would write down the date for the first revision. So re revision number one on, let's say, the 19th of April and revision number two, let's say the 25th of April, etc. So that's basically what I do. So I have these topics on the left and then secondly, I have the dates for all these different revisions on the right side. And here is the most important part. So in order for this system to actually work, you have to be really honest with yourself. So you have to give yourself a perfect rating. So let's say I revised, I don't know, brain tumors and I was not really satisfied with my performance. Then I would rate myself as from one to five, five being the best and one being the lowest. So if I was not really satisfied with my performance, I would give myself a rating based on this um, rating system that I have. So let's say I'm not happy, then I would be giving myself a two. And if I am really happy with the performance, I would give myself a four. And this makes, makes sure that I have this system where I can simply have a look at my retrospective revision timetable and see which topics I'm weak at. So obviously this means that if I have, let's say, a two in brain tumors, whereas I have a four in ALS, then I would obviously choose to revise brain tumors over ALS because I'm pretty comfortable with the topic ALS and I need to focus on my weak, weak points. So you simply repeat this process over and over again and write down your progression in terms of your rating from one to five in order to see how your progression over time has been. And this is basically how I incorporate space repetition using Notion. Now let's talk about this external brain system which I have in Notion which I like to call missions. So why exactly do I call these missions? So these missions are basically any lectures or seminars or topics which I have fallen behind on. So falling behind is something almost every medical student can relate to because of the intensely insane amount of material that you have to know. The point is that when once you have fallen behind, it's really hard to motivate yourself to get those lectures and topics done afterwards. And the mental trick that I like to use is that I like to call these as missions because then this just suddenly adds a, an element of fun to it and that makes it much more likely that I will sit down and get those lectures done. Because we are much more likely to do stuff when it seems like a challenge. For example, if somebody asks you to dump and a bucket of ice on yourself, you are much, you are probably not going to do that. But add the word challenge to it, so for example, the ice bucket challenge, then it suddenly becomes fun and you are much more likely to actually do that because you've just created this sudden element of fun or added this like masala or twist to the task. So the way I do this is that I create a separate page for my missions and then secondly, I again choose the table template. And on the left, I write down the list for all the lectures which I have not done. And then secondly, I also write down the dates for all those separate lectures so that they're easy to find afterwards. And then I have a separate column for the priority status for um, these different lectures. So if there's a topic that I know is extremely important and will be relevant for the exam, or something that I have to know, then I will um, mark it as high priority and that's much more and that makes it much more likely to get done as well. Whereas this is something that, that's not really that important, then I will mark that as low priority because I know that, okay, if I don't get this done, it won't really be that um, dangerous for my exam performance or for, for me being a physician. And then lastly, I just write down whether or not the lecture recordings are available. 
for that particular lecture or not. Now, before we end this video, I would just like to mention that it does not really matter what app you use unless you are disciplined. So an app might not make you disciplined if you don't have that in you already. So discipline is key and all these apps and you know features come afterwards. That's it for today, Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful. And if you did so, then you might also enjoy watching this video right here, which will surely add some value to your lives. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.